Hi guys, today we're in Papawick and it's a lovely, idyllic Nottinghamshire country village. But I don't want to talk about it as it is today. I want to talk about it what it was like over 200 years ago. Papawick would have been dominated by cloth mills uh, at this time, which also was synonymous with child labour. It also meant that with the advent of uh, machinery, it meant that people, uh, hand loomers especially, would be set into poverty and destitution. Born to Richard and Molly in 1799, our story centres around a 17-year-old girl, Elizabeth, better known as Bessie Shepherd. On the 7th of July, 1817, Bessie set off up this road to Mansfield to try and find work. Anxious to look for work, Bessie was wearing her Sunday best. She had a new pair of shoes on and a yellow umbrella as she walked up the A60. Bessie was successful at application to become a servant. With that knowledge, she set off home about 6pm from Mansfield. Charles Rotherham. He was a 33-year-old ex-soldier from Sheffield. It was likely he'd fought in the Napoleonic Wars. He could have been a volunteer. He joined to try and escape poverty. Uh, or he could have been forced to join due to his unsavoury background. During the Battle of Waterloo in 1815, Wellington described the British Army as the scum of the earth. It is also common that once discharged, they were left to scrape a living. Charles was a married man with no children and was regarded as a travelling scissor sharpener. Witnesses stated that they had seen Charles drinking in the Hut pub in Ravenshead that afternoon before leaving towards Mansfield. This very small on Mansfield Road, where the opportune meeting took place. The official story states that Charles attacked Bessie. It was also stated that she was in a dreadful state with her brain protruding from her skull and one eye knocked out of its socket. It appears that Charles stole her new shoes and umbrella and unsuccessfully tried to remove her clothes. Charles left Bessie here to die and it's here where her body was found the next morning by loose coins on the road. The alarm was raised and the search for the assailant began. It was at this exact spot, seven miles between Mansfield and Nottingham, that Charles made his next stop after fleeing the scene. He was seen trying to sell uh, Bessie's goods uh, in the public house that resided here. Further down the Mansfield Road, towards Nottingham, in the area of Red Hill, stood the Three Crowns pub, where this housing estate now sits. Charles sold the shoes in the pub and left without the umbrella, as well as singing two songs on his way out. He then proceeded further towards Nottingham. Charles was arrested on his way to Loughborough from Nottingham by Constable Benjamin Barnes and he allegedly said I'm guilty of the crime and must suffer the course of the law. His clothes did show signs of bloodstains but he could offer no explanation as to why. At his trial Charles entered a plea of guilty but for some reason the judge persuaded him to change his plea to not guilty. The case was heard with a considerable number of people called including Bessie's mother and the newspapers reported him as being resigned to his fate and right up to the time of his death, Rotherham said he had no idea what made him commit such a heinous crime. A stone was erected in 1819 near to the spot where Bessie Shepherd was murdered between Thieves Wood and Ricketts Lane. 
on the east side of the A60. It was paid for by Mr Buckles and other Mansfield residents. This memorial has been moved twice over the years as the road has widened and every time witnesses are reported that they've seen her girl in white located around the area. What's unusual about the memorial is that not only does it carry Bessie's name, Elizabeth Shepherd, but it also covers that of Charles Rotherham. Very strange. <laughs> 